Hey everybody, it's Rob Shapiro from In the Mind Of. Today I have a special guest, uh, Martin Langus, and I'm pretty pretty excited to have Martin. Uh, Martin is the founder and director of the Institute of Orthopedic Manual Therapy. Uh, he graduated in 82 in Germany, and then he went on to do his fellowship with uh, pretty big names in our field, Olaf Evans and Freddie Coltenborn. And uh, as he would say, he stood on, stood on the shoulders of giants, came to the U.S., started the um, IOMT, Institute of Orthopedic Manual Therapy, in 93. And we were fortunate enough to have him join us as well in 2016 with Professional and ProX. And right now, um, Martin is operating the level one, level two classes out of Woburn, Massachusetts. Um, for me, it's pretty exciting. I always kind of, I'm a Yankee fan. So we talk about this where I, you know, saying meeting Martin is like for me meeting Jeter, you know, for you guys who are Yankee people, Jeter's a, you know, a big name. And uh, Martin has been that. He's uh, kind of studied with amazing people. And if you meet him as a person, it's just been uh, just a pleasure to, to have talked to and work with. So Martin, thank you for so much for joining me today. Yeah, thank you for having me. Um, you know, in this COVID time, I have plenty of time, and uh, it's nice to get up and <laughs> put a shirt on with a collar for, for a good reason. So thank you for having me. <laughs> That's right. Great. Now, what, did I miss anything? I went through what I had as your intro, anything yeah. about your history that you want? That's true. Um, as a young therapist, I was very, very lucky to to get a job uh, with the Olaf Evient and his practice in Oslo. Uh, that's where the National Manual Therapy uh, um, program was, was run at the time. And um, I was, uh, there were 35 uh, therapists there. So I had access to all these people who had already taken um, the, the education and um, uh, of course, access to Olaf Event and Freddie Kaltenborn at the time, he had moved to Germany. So, um, but he was in Norway many, many times a year. So whenever he came, he would come and, and do uh, the teaching at the course. Um, so yeah, I was very, very lucky to, to be in an environment where everybody was interested in uh, improving themselves. And I had uh, mentors left and right, uh, uh, not only, uh, you know, in classroom, but watching people treat next to me, listening to people, treating over there and, and learning things on a daily. So I was very, very lucky to be in that situation for sure. And um, when I left uh, after six years um, and moved to America, um, I was uh, also lucky to, uh, with the fact that uh, Olaf Evin would come to America every summer for a month and he would go to a few different places and he would come uh, to see me and teach with me. And so I had access to his mentorship for, uh, uh, you know, over 20 years um, after I moved here. So, um, yes, yeah, so I've been very, very lucky to, to be around those giants, those pioneers, so to speak. Yeah. Right. So it's interesting. So we, we've talked about this before. Um, it seems like therapists today, probably don't know his names as much as like I kind of studied in my years of who did this, who brought this, but um, Colton Bard and Olaf Evans were the guys who brought, I mean, the therapists will know it's, it's, it's the guides and the roles and, you know, things that part of manual therapy yeah. that we, you know, we think about is, is coming. So it's interesting to that. And, and you know, I know, uh, unfortunately they both passed the last two years and the, I guess depending on you and people like Eric, et cetera, to kind of keep this alive and, you know, it's pretty interesting to, to see it as so, uh, you are, a student has to be a, an amazing. Yeah, so uh, it's up to the next generation and, you know, a lot of time has gone by and, and uh, you know, uh, I think it's important for people to know the roots and, you know, just realize what Maitland did, um, uh, Mackenzie did, you know, there's a lot of people uh, who contributed to what, uh, orthopedic manual physical therapy is today. It wasn't only, uh, you know, Colton, Born and Evian, but and I think as the years went by, you know, they, they all kind of combined the knowledge and shared knowledge. So uh, it's very different today than it was 25 years ago, I think. So, uh, mm -hmm. and then we have to remember that. How is, uh, yeah. Go ahead. No, I was saying, how is things as far as, you know, we always talk about teaching. How have you yeah. changed your teaching method in the last 20, 30 years, 30 years at least, right? How have you um, switched how you've done it or have you? Yes. So when I first came here, um, you know, uh, people were starred for manual therapy. So that was 1990. Um, so people really were interested in learning 
uh, manual therapy, how to use their hands and how to mobilize, how to manipulate. And uh, so I was kind of catering to that and probably at the time taught more techniques. Uh, also, of course, that was easier back then because teaching in English after uh, learning it in German and Norwegian uh, was a challenge and, um, right. and my English <laughs> was even wow. worse back then. So, um, so then uh, <laughs> after a while, I realized that the other things that goes along with manual therapy is patient education and how to empower the patients to A, not hurt themselves, B, uh, take care of themselves so that uh, all the things that led them into trouble um, so they had to come and see us, we're taking care of. So more and more, I changed um, the emphasis uh, uh, on teaching the therapist how to teach the patients to take care of themselves. So in other words, patient education. So that's a really, really strong and important part of our concepts that uh, we, need to, we need to get the patients on board to take care of themselves. And then very many good things happen for sure, yes. Right. I think that's some of the hardest part. I think the techniques in the beginning are the hard than really patient management, right? We can do all the great techniques and manipulations, but if we can't manage the patient, I think is what, you know, when I would kind of watch you teach and listen to you teach, it's, you know, I'm amazed how much, how much time in a good way, how much time you put into that for your students. And when I talk to them, you know, other therapists who have been with you, you could see the management part, you know, how they kind of taking it on. And that's part of what, what they do, you know, based yeah. on your teaching. I think, so. um, I think, you know, I've had uh, students now, when I say students, they're all, of course, all practicing licensed physical therapists. But I think uh, all these years, so it's been almost 28 years, um, the general feedback I get after the course is how much they got out of uh, the education part and that the techniques were good. And you know, when we need to, uh, to mobilize or manipulate, the techniques are good, but how much they get out of the education on a daily basis. That's been, you know, uh, a big part of the, the, the feedback I get from, from teaching these courses. So, so that makes me happy because that's how I practice for sure. Yeah. Right. So what, if you had a new therapist coming out, what kind of, what do you give them? What thoughts, what kind of, do you give them some kind of advice? Like, where do you start? Yeah. You know, there's so much to learn and is there a place to start? Yeah. It, it's hard to be a new therapist, you know, the, the zero to three, you know, they come out, they've, they've gone to school for six and a half years, they, they learn so much about so many things. And, you know, the, if they sh start in musculoskeletal, um, you know, they still need to learn more. And it can be stressful and is volume based because we, we, we got to make sure we, we, uh, the business goes uh put put the the computer on top of that uh we have to make the computer happy so so i always tell the patient to the, the new therapist uh, try to seek uh post-professional education um, any way you can try to find a mentor try to be around people you can learn from on a regular base not only weekend courses here and there uh, if possible just being around them so you can ask questions, you can learn from just watching. Um, yeah. And then um, try, try, to, try to think, not turn on to autopilot. So every patient is different. So, right, so those are the things that are, I think are important uh, to, to get to a level where it's fun to go to work Monday morning. And we all get tired and want some time off, but but every day in the practice uh, as a physical therapist should be fun, even though it's it can be busy, you know. So if you reach that plateau, then right. it's it's a great profession, I think. Yeah. Right. So what do you, like so people who haven't level one and level two, like what 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 goes into those courses? So that the series, like. So uh, level one, level level two. one is. Yeah, level one is a part-time course. It's uh, twice a week, four hours, so it's eight hours a week. Um, so it's lecture lab, um, and then for twelve weeks, and then um, four of the eight hours are supervised patient care in in our clinics, and then the rest is in lecture and, and lab. And so we cover. Uh, everything from uh, the extremities uh, to the spine, jaw, and, and um, in lab and in lectures, and um, then the 
the, the second year is open for those who have uh, completed level one. And um, so then the big difference is we spend, it's a smaller group and we spend more time probably with the high, high velocity uh, techniques, uh, in addition to seeing more patients together. So it's kind of building mm -hmm. on the first year. So we, 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 we cover, um, you know, uh, all, all the different areas of the musculoskeletal uh, system. Yes. Right. Do you have a thought? What do you think the future of PT is? Do you have that? I know it's a little deeper <laughs> this morning, but like thoughts of where we're going. Ooh, will there be, question, will be, I, you know, I honestly hope not. There's that. <laughs> so, I need to, uh, some coffee to answer that question, but um, yeah, I would say future of PT. Coffee. <laughs> I mean, I I think there will always, you know, we will get over this pandemic in some way, one way or another, uh, sometime. There might be a new normal for sure, but I think that there's such a demand for our services. Um, you know, not only the, peop the aging population, but even the young and middle-aged people, they don't understand how their body works. They will get in trouble. They will need our expertise um, in how, yeah. how to get out of trouble and, and do better and function better because that's our, we are movement experts. Um, we're not technicians. So there will be, a, a, I think, a, a big demand for what we can uh, service people with, for sure. So it might look different yeah. than it has up to now, but I, I think I'm not afraid of the profession, uh, you know, going downhill in a, in a way. So, or just yeah. turning it into a, a video Zoom uh, thing that I don't, I don't think so. For, so we should be optimistic. Yeah, I'm hoping sure. that, yeah. I'm hoping telemedicine is just a component and not, you know, definitely don't want the new norm. Nothing like hands on and be able to feel things and and touch sure. people, even if it's but, but, touching uh, through emotion, active motion, yeah. as opposed to. Yeah. But I, 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 uh, you know, I was meet, I'm meeting, I'm uh, meeting with my students. Yeah, I'm meeting with my students now uh, online once a week. And uh, uh, one of my students was telling me about a patient he did. Uh, examine before the shutdown and now it's off to, off to telemedicine and he was into this uh, situation where there was so much pain in the morning when he got out of bed and they'd been going over that so so he said well why don't you take the camera into the bedroom and show me and then when he did that uh, the patient rolled out of bed or sat up did fine and as he goes to get up he leans towards his table and get up and gets all this pain. And that's the situation where if we didn't have a camera there, you wouldn't see it. So I think, I think the camera could have a role in, 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 in the future. Like he said, well, every morning or when they do this, well, why don't we zoom and, or do whatever telehealth and show me that particular, let me see it. And then I'll give you, because when you practice things in the practice, that might look fine, but, but things are slightly different. So there might be uh, some right. good things out of, that comes out of this, I think, yeah. Interesting, yeah, very interesting. Um, is there anything else, anything we missed, anything you can think about, like uh, any pearls of wisdom going forward? <laughs> no, I, I just think that for the younger therapist, uh, like I said before, um, it's tough being inexperienced and, and the way forward is to seek more help to get better, uh, um, you know, education, mentorship. Um, like I said before, if you get to a certain level of comfort where you feel comfortable with uh, most people who come in through the door, I can handle this, I can handle that, I've seen that. Um, then it's such a great job. And, and if you don't have that, is, yeah. that's a tough job. That's a tough job. I, I, I was maybe uh, on my way out of the profession um, before I met uh, Carlton Morton and Evian. And then I saw, oh my goodness, there's so much more to learn. And, um, you know, I never look back. And, and uh, you know, I think right. I have the best uh, job in the world treating patients. Yeah understand so yeah the good the most interesting part is the the mentoring we're finding the more we do since we you know we've gone with uh you know pro x and you guys and have seen it we've kind of developed more education but seeing you and what you've got your program and you know what it's done for the therapists who've gone through it the mentoring is huge when i did my residency it was the same thing you don't realize 
how much you learn until you watch somebody next to you, you know, and kind of see what they did and see how they handle even situations. You know, I have situations where people can't handle a patient and you, somebody else does a really nice job of kind of bringing the patient back in and you're like, Oh, that's interesting. Maybe I'll, I should do that. That's the hardest part. A lot of our clinics sometimes will have like one therapist coming, one going, but making the time for mentorship is a huge. I think that's a, and, and, and it's, you know, it, it makes the younger therapists so much happier and, and optimistic. And uh, so I think if possible, that's a very good strategy to, to have mentorship uh, available to, to, to the younger therapists for sure. That's, that's how I started to improving and, and growing and you never stop growing you never stop learning. And, mm -hmm. uh, even in my situation where I teach a lot, I learned so much from teaching. So, um, right. you know, it's Every a day, right? win win situation for sure. Yeah. Right. Same thing. I'm almost done. One more, two more classes left for my doctorate. So I'm still learning. I got two more, I have an evidence-based practice and my capstone. So, uh, you know, I'm still there learning, uh, you know, hanging out with you when I come up there, it's my excitement is to come, let's see what Martin's doing. So I appreciate the time this morning. Enjoy your coffee and uh, we'll hopefully we'll talk more soon. Sounds good. And, uh, and thank you again for having me.